Right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Gold Global World. Uh, Gold Global World is a digital Silicon Valley ecosystem for global founders and investors. This is where uh, uh, startups uh, find a lot of support from founders uh, that are located around the world and they help out each other uh, to enter different markets and scale globally. At the same time, investors can find here promising startups that have potential for, to scale and, of course, uh, for them to invest in. So quickly in, in numbers about us, we have over 3,000 founders, community members, and uh, uh, so uh, those are the startup founders located literally around the world on every continent, and they're building some cutting edge technology uh, and uh, scaling it right now. So uh, those the founders you will see today, they're among our community members. Uh, they are selected to pitch to top tier investors that we selected for today. Um, we have a team in place that uh, has a lot of expertise and experience screening scoring startups. And uh, so uh, these are uh, the people on the slide. They are from uh, different par parts of the uh, world, but the most important uh, these guys has, have a lot of expertise in working with startups and that's why they are, are here with us to uh, help startups to get to the final step. And uh, one more thing uh, to, about today's startups. Uh, we have four teams selected for today. Uh, one of them play out of apparel from uh, East Coast United States. Uh, Winnie, a tech uh, startup uh, uh, pin steps from Israel and green growth from Europe uh, in Agritech. Well, uh, these are the technologies that we believe that have a lot of potential and high potential teams. We want to hear from investors, and uh, this is the moment when uh, investors can say a little uh, about themselves. So, up to one minute, I ask every investor to just give a few words about yourself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Evan Matuzak. Uh, I'm an investor uh, at Plug and Play Ventures. Uh, we're one of the more uh, active early stage investors in the world, made over 200 early stage investments last year and are probably gonna do 250 this year. Um, average check size is around 100K um, between sort of typical ranges between 50, 250. Um, in general, we believe that, you know, talent is evenly distributed, but uh, funding isn't. Uh, so we um, invest um, about a little over half of our investments outside of the US. Uh, we have a pretty globally distributed team uh, and are geography and industry agnostic. Um, yeah, uh, we also uh, partner with um, over 500 corporations across 16 different industries, uh, really to provide business development opportunities for the startups that we work with. Um, so yeah, check out our website, a lot of information there. Um, yeah, no, very, very happy to be part of this event. And uh, thanks for all the, the entrepreneurs for, for sharing their companies. Thank you for great questions and thank you for sharing uh, information about your fund. Um, Danny, uh, Danny is from Australia. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, he uh, he can hear us. Uh, Danny, uh, can you tell a few words about your funds? Uh, can you hear me? If you can unmute yourself, uh, your mic is muted. Um, Danny is a venture uh, investor and uh, uh, managing partner of uh, of the funds. Uh, in Australia, and I'm hoping he can give a few words. Then if you have a chance, just shout out and uh, you'll have a chance to speak about your fund. David Culver, please give a few words about uh, your fund and your investment focus, if you can. Sure, uh, thanks very much. Uh, good job overall. Uh, I'm Dave Culver, I'm venture advisor for Propellant Ventures, but Jason's on the call as well, so I'll let him talk about Propellant Ventures. Uh, we're seed stage and pre-seed stage fund, um, and he can talk about that. Um, I also run VentureShot, which is a uh, strategic growth program and large investor network, kind of like a supercharged angel group, except that we also have other family offices and uh, angels and other uh, VCs like Propellant Ventures that are part of our, our group. So we can invest anywhere from angel round or e even earlier to about Series B. Uh, we, we tend to have a uh, make the world a better place uh, focus but we're not an impact fund per se. We like companies that make money and hopefully they have a positive impact as well. And that is what our guys were talking about. They are eager to make money first. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Jason, please say a few words about Propel and Ventures and your investment focus. Yeah, hi, thank you for having me here. Great job, everyone. Uh, Propel and Ventures is a seed stage venture fund based in Chicago, Illinois. Our primary focus is to invest in B2B tech-enabled businesses located in the Midwest region. We can't go outside that region, but our initial focus is the Midwest. We are generally one of the first VCs in a round. Uh, and so we'll invest alongside other angels and of course other VCs, but we can come in and professionalize the round to help get other investors. Industries we like, but not inclusive are health tech, FinTech, ed tech, supply chain, future of work. Uh, and we've made five investments so far, and we're obviously looking to make more investments. I also run the Founder Institute in Chicago, so I you know one of our uh, first presenter is a FI Silicon Valley grad, so and the Loyal VC uh, companies and a mentor so. and a mentor with FI in Silicon Valley. As well. Awesome, that's great. So Dave Culver is also a mentor in Chicago, so, uh, Founder Institute. So, but thank you for being here, or, or for hosting me, I should say too. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I want to say that uh, Jason uh, and I had a, a video podcast uh, last week about startup ecosystem in the Midwest and uh, those who want to learn more about this region and why it's better than Silicon Valley and, it, and, and uh, what it makes that uh, region unique. Uh, Jason in great detail gives this explanation and it's already on Google World YouTube. Just uh, take a look. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. Sure. Uh, Nathan uh, Rosenkras, uh, please uh, say a few words about your funds uh, and your investment focus, if you want. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Um, I think like a couple other faces I'm seeing on here, I started my venture journey with the Venture Partners, um, went through their fellowship program. And right now, a partner of mine, um, we're raising our first fund. So we're really just kicking off that process. So. Um, I can empathize with the with the startups that are also trying to find funding a little bit here. Um, but we're really going to be early stage focus. My focus is very much on crypto, fintech, ed tech platform, um, and then you know some other deals from there. But my partner is very much more focused on the tech size and enterprise SaaS and and things of that nature. So that's what I got going on. Thank you, Nathan. Appreciate that. Uh, Brian, do you want to add a few words about your investment focus? Uh... Sure, Daniel. Thanks so much for a great conference. Uh, really excited about the early stage companies that presented. Great job. Uh, so I started angel investing in 2000 and uh, have since pulled together a network of people I've invested with or shared deals with. Our group's up to about 30,000. We used to meet in New York City five times a year. And then with COVID, we switched to uh, Zoom meetings monthly online. We get about 500 to 1,000 a month. So we're always looking for great companies. Uh, we've invested about 300 million over the years. Uh, we do not have a fund. It's all high net worth individual investors that make their own decisions. But um, you know, uh, again, we're at starlightcapital.co. You can get the details. And uh, again, great job for uh, some super presentations today. Thank you, Brian. And uh, as far as I know, uh, you are located in Alaska. Is this correct? Uh, right. I actually uh, kind of grew up in Chicago, spent most of my uh, professional life in Houston, Texas, and then a couple of years ago retired with my wife to our lake house that we've had for many years and just enjoy the outdoors and getting great exercise and uh, breathing clean air and seeing lots of wild <laughs> animals. So it's a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. Just uh, probably probably one of the first investors from Alaska, and it's just very awesome to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, who is next? Um, Ahmed Al Dukhar. Oh, please say a few words about yourself, about your fund. Hi, everyone. I would like to first thank the entrepreneurs on, on pitching today. Uh, my name is Ahmed Al-Bakir. I'm, I'm a, uh, an ex-entrepreneur that had an exit in 2015. Uh, I worked in, in venture capital uh, as a director and then moved into creating my own track record as an angel investor. Uh, I, I work as a consultant for a couple of multiple family offices across the Gulf. Uh, we're sector agnostic. Uh, we focus on investing in pre-seed and seed, and we mainly uh, target companies in, in North America and uh, Western Europe. All right. Thank you so much. 
Um, and it would be great to have you in here. So we have the first startup to present. Uh, that is uh, um, uh, Play of Apparel, Abby Sugar. My name is Abby Sugar, and I'm the founder and CEO of Play Out Apparel. Play Out is a Gen Z lifestyle brand, and our mission is to lead the next generation of fashion by applying equality to design, shopping, and gender expression. This is the future of inclusive fashion and self-expression, offering community and gender equal clothing to help Gen Z shop their authentic selves in real life and the metaverse. Consumers increasingly will only shop from brands that align with their values and social views, most notably believing that brands should be pro-diversity and inclusion and favoring brands that prioritize environmental sustainability. Speaking of values and social views, 56% of Gen Z shops outside of their assigned gender. This is a $16 billion opportunity. We are targeting this 56% of Gen Z like no other brand. Our ethos and apparel is sexuality, gender, race, size from extra small to 5X, age and ability inclusive in the community engagement and events in real life and in XR, in our apparel designs, construction, and our brand marketing DNA. A little note about our competition. This is a completely new market. Legacy brands reinforce or are limited to hyper-gendered styles, and they do not authentically speak to or relate to these consumers. I have a chart at the end that explains a little bit more about our competition, and I'm happy to answer questions. My team brings over 40 years of combined experience in e-com and fashion retail. Playout came from a personal need for gender expression affirming apparel to exist. Every person should feel able to authentically express themselves and move through the world with positivity and ease. Clothing and shopping from brands that represent who we are is a major way that we do that as social beings. We're creating the brand that we wish existed when we were younger. Play Out is a Founder Institute select portfolio company and one of their 50 fastest growing companies of 2021. We were profiled in the New York Times last year and I was named to the 2021 Forbes Next 1000 list. Chief Design Officer and Co-Founder E. Leifer is the former Director of Creative Production at Intermix and COO John Lackner comes to us as former country CEO of H&M Mexico. Playout started direct to consumer to validate this emerging market exists. And we know that non-gendered shopping is the future of all retail market sectors. Just as people come in different sizes, extra small or 3X, they also come in different shapes. For this, we offer both a flat front and pouch front style of bottoms of the same garment with no men's or women's sections or gender allocation. All styles are designed in-house by co-founder E and our limited edition prints are actually original paintings that are digitized and made into our fabric. When we say we design inclusively, this means there is equal opportunity for shape, size, color, and style in shopping without gender categories or othering due to body differences. Our ethically manufactured clothing is made in Guadalajara, Mexico at a queer friendly female owned factory. I like to compare our Gen Z lifestyle brand to that of Red Bull. Red Bull gives you wings. They created experiential social commerce with extreme sports sponsorships and community shopping before social media existed. They make their revenue selling energy drinks. We are the inclusive, self-affirming, gender equal lifestyle brand for Gen Z with apparel as our first revenue stream. This mind map shows the vertical integration and wholly owned ecosystem as a lifestyle brand. We have four pillars and revenue streams include apparel, recent marketplace, IRL events, and a metaverse community. Focused on the Gen Z consumer, we're community driven and mobile first. In the emerging metaverse, fashion has a very real use case and connection between NFTs, gaming, digital skins, and self-expression and physical goods. Last year's sales showed proof of concept. We know who our customers are and how to reach them and that they are eager to buy from us. We have a capsule collection launching on Macy's.com in May and a new streaming shopping show like QBC for the next generation with a pilot on Sling TV network. In alignment with our mission and values, we are a social good enterprise. We have a 20% net profit donation promise to LGBTQ plus and organizations that promote racial and social equality. 
We've successfully raised $575,000 from values aligned investors. Our current investors include the Gangels, Loyal VC, Andy Dunn, co founder of Bonobos, and a number of tech executives who believe in our expertise and the, this massive new market opportunity. With interest to oversubscribe, I'm quickly closing our pre seed round in the next month and seeking $200,000 before our valuation increases at seed in June. Play out and our investors are stepping up to deliver the next generation of lifestyle brand and community in fashion. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Uh, great presentation. Uh, so uh, dear investors, please uh, provide, uh, give your feedback. Now we have 10 minutes for feedback and those who don't provide feedback uh, right now, uh, please fill out the form that is here in the chat. So do you guys have any questions to Abby? I can I can go first. Um, yes, please. Evan. No, totally, totally get what you're what you're building. Um, totally get it. So many things are needlessly gendered in our society. Um, so totally get what you're what you're building here. Um, no, I'd just love to learn some more of the numbers. Um, you know, what are your margins? Uh, how much does it cost to acquire your customers? Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. So our margins range depending on the product. We started with underwear because that was our personal need and we're so successful that we expanded into streetwear. We're actually launching swim this summer. In terms of our margins, the underwear, which retails for between 20 and $28 has an 80 to 85% margin descent, depending on the style based on cost of goods sold. And our streetwear ranges from probably a 50 to 70% margin. In terms of our omnichannel revenue stream approach, um, we maintain very, very big spreadsheets in terms of what the margins are so that something that goes down to a 50% margin, we're not going to offer to our wholesale partners. We're going to reserve that as exclusive so selling direct consumer um, so that we can have our margins on that. But our margins are very much in line, if not better um, than other apparel brands. Um, in terms of, I just had it in my brain, your second connect. Oh, customer acquisition costs. <laughs> um, so we are still in a growth phase. So I know that our CAC is higher than we would like it to be. But one example I can give is that um, I gave some details about the campaign we did on Teen Vogue and them. And that was a $25,000 buy for brand awareness, right? Reaching new customers. And our return on that for a very first touch with people was quadrupling our revenue in four weeks to $12,500. So we outperformed their click-through rate benchmarks by over 500%. We know that we are just tragically underfunded in marketing and advertising. When we do have the funds to invest in that growth, we just blow people out of the water with our KPIs. I have a, I have a question. Um, you may touch on a competition. I mean, you know, who else is out there? And you know, what about some of the large brands that have a ton of marketing dollars? You know, unless, you know, and I'm sure there's new brands as well that have come hey. in play. Exactly. Great question. So here's a little chart. Um, and uh, if we're talking about legacy brands, I like to give the example as Nike, of Nike. So in 2019, they did a gender neutral collection, which was just sweatpants and shorts. And that's not, first of all, that's not fashion, that's sweats. And second of all, when people were they did, you know, they put these ads out, people would click on them and they'd end up on the Nike site forced to choose men's or women's. So then there was this whole backlash. So this is what I mean by them not authentically connecting with these new consumers and with this new, new customer. Um, in terms of startups, there's a brand called Tomboy X, for example, that is venture backed. Um, and they are gender neutral. But the reason we don't say gender neutral is because when you neutralize something, you're automatically defaulting that to the, the prevailing hierarchy, which in our society is masculinity. So Tomboy X is actually an assigned female at birth brand. They make women's clothes, right? With a, with a masculine style. We truly are equal in opportunity and self-expression. Whatever style you're comfortable with, because we don't have gender sections, please shop from us. Um, similarly, you have underwear only brands such as Parade that is targeting the Gen Z customer. Again, they're assigned female at birth only. Um, and we really have, you know, open 
ideas for like our the first thing I get asked for is kids and teens clothes right so in terms of opportunities for us, this is even bigger than just what we currently design um, and also we're truly gender equal. Okay, thanks. Thank you so much uh, any other questions uh, to Abby. Yeah, I have a quick question on terms of the market size. So you touched on like 16 billion, I believe was the number. Um, so I'm curious, like, to understand that breakdown a little bit more, like, what percentage of that is just women buying a men's sweatshirt versus yep. more the market you're really targeting? Yeah, so this comes that 16 billion um, is a breakdown from the $143 billion in buying power that Gen Z has. And so if you say 56% of them, that comes down to about 80 billion, 81 billion um, that shop outside of their assigned gender, right? It's a completely new consumer. And then I say, based on our average order value, which currently sits at $64, has been as high as $101. And as we release higher price point things, we are going to see those bigger carts. So based on that, and based on our 37% returning customer rate, which is way above the industry average of 16%, I say that we can get we can gain 20% of that spend, which is where the 16 billion comes from. All right. Any more questions? Hey, Abby, I'm curious. What do you see as the bigger opportunity? Is it the um underwear is it the streetwear is it what do you see what is your current focus and what do you see as the bigger opportunity longer term so longer term it's definitely growth into other retail market sectors as well as being the lifestyle brand for gen z in gaming and the metaverse the reason that i just compare us a little bit to Red Bull is because they were sponsoring these teams. They own an F1 racing team. Their, their logos are everywhere, right? And they make their money selling energy drinks. So if we look at, I'm really passionate about inclusivity and making sure that underrepresented groups have, an have access to these new opportunities. One of them being like how you can express yourself in the metaverse, NFTs for community building, giving back to our community through that type of engagement. Um, and so that's sort of our second revenue stream that, that we're diving into. Um, now, you know, it's very, very early stages, but one of the things that's really amazing for me is I was speaking with our team, our younger employees, and they were like, they're in web two, the LGBTQ plus community and the younger generation was able to find each other and find support when they weren't getting that in real life. And web three is just an extension and an even better version of that because somebody who may not be happy with their body or their self expression in the real world can actually represent themselves and be whoever they want in in the metaverse. And so I want to make sure that instead of leaving it to Gucci and Adidas and Nike, that we're actually being inclusive and creating some opportunities um, in this new world. Great. I'm Nick, co-founder of Winnie, and I have something cool for you. I believe that if you act today, your relationship with kids will improve tomorrow. Have you ever been in a position like, I want to play with my kid, but have no idea what the game? Here is Alex, who is 35 years old and the father of three, who works from home. When it's time to play, he usually recalls games from his childhood or goes to Google. Or you can meet another hero, Olivia. Olivia is 33 years old and the first time mom of a two years old. She was bored with the same games played again and again. So our task is straightforward. Suggest the fun, best fun activities for you and your kids. I mean something meaningful for channel development and fun for you. And something that does not require a ton of preparation and can be tried right away. So our solution is simple. It's a mobile app with the unique ideas and detailed instructions, even if you only have 15 minutes. But how it works? Both your and your kids' interests matter. We always keep it in mind. All you need is to take four simple steps. Tell us what you like, get the best matching games, customize game if necessary, and enjoy the game and get an achievement badge. We are primarily targeting millennials in the US as they enter parenthood. Our estimated top is about $1 billion, our true sum amount to $11 million, and we expect to hit 100 million valuation very quickly. Tom is defined on the slide, it's just a total number of parents multiplied by the product price. What's the big picture of the industry? 
Well, BTS has a bunch of cool products. Most of them are US-based and well-funded. Why? Perspectives are clear. There are no direct competitors. Some similar projects are focused on child development, but not quality time with your kids. So our go-to-market strategy is clean. We primarily target a small group of first-time parents, 30 to 37 years old, who are ready to spend from 30 to 50 minutes playing games with their kids. We are reaching them now through local communities and targeting user segments provided by our partners. Few words about our traction. This is one of the most crucial slides for a startup, and investors want to see dynamics and retention cohorts here. However, we are in the product market fit stage now, and our primary goal is to find the best marketing channel. The application is available in the App Store and Google Play. We use a subscription business model. Our initial subscription costs $19 per month. Our MRR is slowly growing, and now it's around $500. We also managed to reduce CPI by almost 10 times, from 30 to 3 USD. As you can see, we only launched in December 21 and started testing marketing in January 2022. Our goal for the second quarter of 2022 is to reach on MRR of $5,000. So let me introduce an executive team really quickly. We have three founders with a very diverse background. Here is how we split the job to be done. I am a CPO with one successful exit from a mobile app with over 1 million users, three failed startups, eight, eight years experience of mobile app development expertise. In 2020, I graduated from the three accelerators in the US. Alex is our CBDO and a father of three. He works with investors and develop a business methodology. Alex co-founded an investment fund that demonstrated a 4X capitalization growth in three years. And James is our CEO and tech founder, built and managed life international teams from the scratch to a successful product launch. Now we are looking for $800,000 to lead a huge number of millennial parents and communicate the benefits of our product. So we create meaningful entertainment opportunities for you and your kids and reduce their screen time. That's about Winnie and thanks for your attention. Excellent presentation. Thank you, um, Nikita. Um, so everyone, uh, please uh, start filling in the forms, uh, evaluation forms, and uh, uh, ask your questions here. Uh, uh, well, Nikita is here. So you have 10 minutes for the feedback. If, uh, if you were on time. Is there any uh, questions for Nikita, for Winnie? I was very clean in my explanation. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty good um, in terms of presenting. Uh, just uh, um, uh, do you guys? Uh, uh, what's your uh, yeah? What's your plan to scale this? You said you had a million customers or users your last business. What's your plan to get there with this one? So we plan to find a scalable marketing channel uh, because now when we are looking for the product market fit, we started with the uh, communities local communities because it's cheaper and we are able to get a lot of feedback from our users. But with the product growth, we understood that we need uh, some scalable channel like, uh, I cannot answer what it be now. It can be Google or it can be Facebook. So we have a lot of expertise in digital marketing. So I hope that uh, we can do it quite successful. And on the other hand, we are able to scale uh, outside uh, the US because we have a huge market in the US. But we know that uh, the problem with the screen time, the problem with the ideas for games, it's a worldwide problem. So if we will run out of users in the US, I think that we can grow worldwide. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, are there any more questions, guys? Okay, while we're waiting for uh, other investors to ask questions, if there would be any, uh, uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. We are raising equity. We are Delaware-based uh, startup. Uh, it's a classic, uh, a classical legal structure for a startup, Delaware for C. Uh, so we already raised uh, three hundred thousand uh, dollars. Uh, also, one fund. It's Admitad Fund. It's a fund uh, uh, with a focus on the CPA, uh, cost per action marketing. Uh, he already invested in our product, and uh, I can say that. Uh, but it was around like pre MVP, and uh, now we plan to raise next round with that traction. So our goal is to reach 
uh, an MRR around uh, from five to 10K. So I think it will allow us to, uh, to raise money with valuation around from seven to $9 million. Okay. Um, please fill in the forms. And uh, in the end of the form, uh, you will see that uh, you may decide to uh, speak with this uh, startup separately or not. And if you select that, you will connect to them uh, individually for private uh, meeting. Um, uh, are there any more questions uh, to Vinny team? Did you touch on the revenue model at all? Uh, so now we are focused on product metrics, but at the same time, because we have a lot of expertise in mobile apps, because I operated more than 30 apps, uh, we try to find the combination between uh, uh, a revenue and uh, and the venture model, something like this. So uh, I believe that to be successful in 2022, you need to have revenue in any startup because I am uh, so. Uh, I, I'm um, I'm not studied in Stanford or something like this. So uh, our team team doesn't have uh, a lot of network uh, in a. Um, uh, so I think you don't have enough network to burn money <laughs> without limitations. Like if we will be some type of maybe clubhouse or something like this, yes, we, we can, but uh, we cannot. Okay, uh, are there any more questions to Vinny? I think uh, it was pretty good uh, explanation. Um, thank you, uh, wish you good luck, uh, good job. And um, uh, the next team is pin steps. Uh, while we're waiting for pin steps to start, uh, please fill in uh, the forms, fi finalize the forms, and provide your written feedback if possible. Um, pin steps, okay. Okay, so you have uh, five minutes uh, for your presentation, and you may start now. Okay. Hi everyone, glad to see you all. So, hi, my name is Kirill and I will tell you how to uncover your unique travel path with pin steps. Every time I was going on a trip, I faced a bunch of problems. These problems could spoil my rest and by the way, many of them really did. Let's try to remember them. Rushing from one place to another. The guide doesn't speak my language. Dragging into shops that have an agreement with the guide the impossibility to skip on interesting places, high cost of excursions, and many more others. So this is the reason why we came up with pin steps, which allows you to get a self guided on your phone here and now. I will tell you my story. I had a work trip to Dubai and I could spend hours and hours looking for places that are not overused, such as Burj Khalifa, Fontaines, or Palm Islands, but those that are of historical view. You may say, why you didn't book an excursion? Of course I could, but it was not very convenient for me due to my schedule. So I downloaded Pinsteps and in a couple of seconds, I was able to find places and guides with the routes around those places. And after purchase, I received offers from integrated businesses. So now I could not only have free coffee uh, at the sea, but also learn uh, the history of the place. So let's speak about the profit. My guide got the additional income and the opportunity to offer his unique experience, not only to those who speak English, but to anyone who wants it. We receive a commission for every purchase. Businesses, hotels, and airlines that are integrated into the route receive loyal customers and purchases. We receive a subscription payment. The municipalities and organizations receive unique analytics, which we automatically collect for each user. We receive payments depending on the type of analytics we provide. We've developed a technology of collecting and transforming a unique experience of a guide or a traveler into self-guided content, which we connect with the personalized businesses by means of AI. Our application combines simplicity and convenience, and the platform for creating routes allows you building the path of any complexity with the reference to the main Right now we have more than 10,000 users and it continues to grow. We have reached uh, the 60% retention rate for the first uh, week. 
the average cost, cost of excursions is from $10. The subscription for businesses starts from $150. Uh, the average number of uh, businesses in the connected routes is from two to four. Uh, 10 hotels are already connected and the amount is growing. The growth of the digital tourism market is 17% uh, per year and it continues to grow. Uh, TM is about $10 billion, which speaks of the limitless application potential. So right now it is time to change the clumsy world of tourism. And even despite the huge number of restrictions, we have shown pretty good results. Instead of acquiring uh, B2C users, we pivoted to municipalities and B2B travel agencies that bring us users with zero marketing expenses. Our last pilot in Israel doubled our user base, uh, made us pass the break-even point, and allowed us to sign the long-term contracts with the government. Uh, see, here you may see that every time uh, we launch a special program, the user base is growing on the previous. And by 2023, we plan to enter the American market. Here you can see the comparison to our competitors, which shows Pinsteps has many more ways of integration with businesses and clients. We easily scale to hotels or municipalities, what gives us a unique superiority over other market participants, since no additional equipment is required. I met Elia at one of the educational programs in Israel. He's our master of the code. Uh, later, I met our ideological inspirer, Eugen, uh, who is the owner of an educational travel agency. And after that, we met Dmitry, who creates all the beauty and all the convenience of our application. And based on our personal travel experience and the background of Fusion, we created Pinsteps to simplify travel experience. And yes, we know what the tourist wants as we had exactly the same problems before. We are raising funds to develop and improve our AI tech ecosystem and to scale sales. So join us in creating the travel world of the future. Thanks for watching, scan the QR code and you will see the potential with your own eyes. Great job, thank you so much. Uh, and and uh, now we will, you will have 10 minutes uh, for the questions. Uh, yeah. Yes, um, yeah. uh, dear investors, please ask your questions. I, I'm just, you know, is this similar to like Airbnb experiences where, you know, that, you know, where they're doing self-guided tours by locals or is this more digital or is there a combination of that? Because I know there's a lot of other companies out there that you didn't mention that are doing things like this. There's one in Silicon Valley called, I think, Detour. That was started by the Groupon founder um, who was doing self-guided tours. So I'm just trying to figure out the positioning here because I didn't see some of those other competitors mentioned. Uh, yes, uh, speaking about Detour, uh, they appear a little bit after us. Uh, we uh, connected with Airbnb, uh, uh, with uh, other uh, players on the market, uh, but we are focusing on municipalities right now as uh, they give us users with zero, mar zero marketing exp uh, expenses, as I mentioned. And uh, we choose uh, this uh, way of scaling as uh, it helped us to spread in our network uh, with the help of municipalities and hotels really fast. So speaking about uh, the successful pilots in Dubai and uh, in Israel, um, only uh, three uh, hotels uh, give us an opportunity to uh, reach uh, more than uh, 2,000 uh, users a day. So um, we prefer more, more um, these types of connections, uh, neither Airbnb types. Yes, but, but still we connect with them, but uh, it is kind of hard to integrate into their a API. Okay. In order to be like. All right. Thank you. Um, who's next? Any other questions to Bean Steps? Well, uh, the uh, 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 Israel market is uh, among the top two or top three in the world after the US, I guess. Uh, this is a, a excellent opportunity, and the guys are entering the US soon. Um, uh, is there, uh, do you guys have any more questions to pin steps? It seems like a great opportunity for tourism. Um, yes. You know, what, what have your uh, key learnings been so far uh, with your initial users um, and how has that impacted your product roadmap? 
um, the basics. Uh, we track all the behavior of the travelers since they start the excursion. We track uh, where they go, uh, how long they stay there, um, do they uh, go uh, from uh, out of the route or they prefer to just stay directly at the route. Um, also, we can uh, provide uh, the information about um, how many people uh, purchased something uh, at the this or that place. Uh, it, it really depends on uh, the uh, wants of uh, the organization which wants their uh, analytics, but uh, the, the radius is pretty big. So we collect uh, all which connects so, and run any uh, limits. Uh, we can uh, uh, implement any type. So if uh, the government, for example, uh, allows you to track uh, the purchases uh, uh, made by the, for example, Apple Pay, okay, uh, we will implement this type and uh, we will see uh, what are the purchases, how many times and so on. It depends on uh, the government first and uh, the needs of uh, the organization. Um, but it's pretty big. Okay, we have a few minutes left. Uh, are there more questions to, to Kirill Kamayan? All right, uh, great job, Kirill. Uh, good luck with your project. Uh, uh, thank you for presenting and uh, wish you success in uh, uh, your local market. And uh, of course, uh, hope to see you in the US soon. <clears throat> thank you. It was a great opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, and uh, please, everyone, finish your evaluation forms. The next startups, um, startup and the final startup for today is Green Growth. Uh, the guys are uh, doing a great job in agriculture and digitalizing it. And they're about to present. Uh, so you guys ready to present? Yes, I'm ready. So you have five minutes and you can start now. Hi, everyone. My name is Alfia. I'm co-founder and the CEO of Agritech Startup Green Growth. I was born in a countryside and my parents owned the land. So since childhood, I've been involved in growing crops, vegetables and fruits. This is why I know for sure that the dream of any farmer is to significantly reduce costs for fertilizers and seeds and at the same time increase the yield. But the current solutions that help farmers to track and monitor their actual yield are quite expensive and difficult to use. This is why we developed SaaS platform that in the real time demonstrate how much crop was harvested from the each acre of their land. After harvesting season finish, uh, we provide farmers with uh, these kind of heat maps that demonstrate how efficient a farmer was during the whole year. The data we take directly from combined harvesters. This information allows farmers to optimize their strategy for seeding and fertilizing, uh, help to reduce agrochemical soil analysis and help to validate experiments with seeds and fertilizers, which uh, is quite a big part of their job. Our solution is universal. This is why we're targeting every combined harvester. And our market of only this solution is more than 2 billion US dollars. In our mid term strategy, we are going to uh, cover all machines that exist in crop production from tillaging till harvesting and provide farmers with end-to-end -end analytics. You know that the agricultural market is one of the most conservative one. This is why uh, we use traditional channels uh, like uh, cold calls, emailing, participation in fairs and exhibition. We have uh, our strong partners in software um, in software that provides difficult um, FMS systems. And also we are communicating with harvester manufacturers to be their standard option. Yes, we have competitors, but also we have a magic source. We were able to reduce production costs in 10 times this is why our final uh, price, uh, five, sometimes 10 times lower than competitors one. 
Also, our solution is easy to install and easy to calibrate. This is why we have more potential for scalability. We were established in June 2021, and since that time, we did a big step toward our success. We passed successful tests with OEMs. Uh, we made first sales. We passed into European Accelerator hardware and green accelerator. We finished our development of uh, hardware uh, kit. Uh, we almost finished our web application. And at this moment, we have our revenue um, about 100,000 uh, US dollars. And all these achievements were impossible without our team. So I'm responsible for sales and business development and my partner, uh, Evgeny Savin, he's a unique uh, project manager. He's responsible for the whole um, development process. Also, we have head of hardware and head of software uh, that are big specialists in the industries and they have experience of 10 years of developing. And we have a young and very active head of manufacturing that help us to do our kits. Uh, we closed our pre-seat round in October 20. Uh, I'm sorry, in March uh, 2022, and we are going to uh, raise another one uh, in a couple of months. You can see on the slide the breakdown of, um, of investment, actually. Um, this is uh, all. <laughs> um, thank you for your attention. I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Althea. Uh, great job on uh, closing the first round and uh, uh, since you have potential to close the next one soon, and uh, the technology seems uh, very high potential. So, uh, mm, dear investors, please uh, ask your questions. Uh, and uh, uh, those who don't, please fill in the form. Hey, I'm curious, when you, when you pitch potential customers, what is the what, what is the biggest sale? Or what, what is the thing that gets them excited and gets them over the line to uh, sign up? Um, three, three points. Uh, the first one, uh, the cost. Uh, the existing solutions only for hardware costs 10, 15, 20 uh, thousand US dollars. And uh, we think that uh, the value is not in the hardware, but on the software that provides this hardware. Uh, the second one, uh, we show uh, how efficient uh, the farmer was in the each acre of his land. Uh, because usually uh, nowadays uh, the farmer have information only about the total amount of harvested crop. For example, we did 300 tons from this uh, field, but uh, farmers usually um, don't know uh, what was calculated, how this uh, um, figure, how this amount was calculated from uh, which uh, actually distributed yield. And when he see these heat maps, he understands that he has weak points and strong uh, points in his field. And this is how he can also uh, optimize his day-to-day uh, uh, -day operations. So you mentioned you're going after every harvester. Is there a more defined strategy around that? Are you focused on a particular region, type of harvester, type of crop? Um, is I'm guessing you have more than what you mentioned, but I'm just curious. Um, actually, we're targeting any age, model, or year um, of harvesters. So uh, we have, um, of course, targeting markets. Uh, they are United States, Canada, um, Australia, uh, CIS countries, uh, Latin America, so all countries that um, heavily work in uh, crop production. Okay, um, uh, Althea, uh, that, uh, you probably mentioned already, but uh, I know that you're developing the markets uh, such as United States uh, in your plans, uh, a part of Europe, and also Mexico and some others. So can you uh, also elaborate on that? Uh, so what are your plans of entering these markets and what's, what's in there already? You probably have already some potential customers in there. Yes, we have potential customers uh, in United States. We have several pre-orders uh, from uh, American farmers. Uh, we also uh, um, 
um, making and developing our dealer network. And we are communicating with several in uh, United States and Argentina. And what else? Uh, we have um, pre-orders also in uh, LATAM market, from LATAM market. And at this moment, we are communicating with our software partners that want to integrate uh, our layer of uh, data in their app. So this is also um, interesting integration partners. Thank you. Uh, please ask your questions if you have any. Uh, do you have more questions to Green Growth? I, I have a question. Um, if the, you know, relative to the subscription price, I guess the subscription price is $400. Um, yes. You know, what does that translate to in, in savings or better yield um, as like a dollar amount for, for the farmers? Counted uh, from our success stories that uh, usually farmers save um, around uh, seventy thousand uh, uh, dollars uh, by using this kind of technologies because the cost for fertilizers from year to year it's only increase never never opposite and the cost for seeds is also increasing from year to year so when we uh, help them uh, to decrease the cost uh, for uh, 10, 15 percent. Uh, this gives actually a great advantage and uh, benefit for them. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Great questions, guys. Uh, are there more questions to Green Growth? All right. Uh, please fill in the form. Uh, and this is the final startup to relate. <clears throat> and we will see the results. And uh, please decide though, uh, on those startups you want to meet uh, uh, with personally. Uh, we will do a direct introduction. And on this note, I am closing the, uh, the formal part of our session. I'm grateful everyone. I'm grateful to startups who are making uh, great products and presenting it today. And thanks for uh, coming to our session. And thanks to, to you investors. Uh, you guys uh, are a very important part of uh, demo days and we're grateful for your participation. And we look forward to seeing you again in the future.